On today's episode, we learn how to make a Star Wars quilt. Okay, everybody, we just got an amazing deal on not just one, but two Star Wars figures. And they're probably two of the most expensive figures in this entire run. I'm kind of excited right now. So what are the most expensive figures in my run? Before I show you what crazy deals that I got, let's just do something different and go through a top 10 list of the most expensive Star Wars figures. So in my research, and granted, this is 2021 prices. Prices are still climbing due to a bunch of collectors just collecting during the pandemic. So this price list is for this time. I'm also not gonna include some figures like any of the double telescoping figures in the Kenner line because one, those aren't in my collection run and two, just imagine that they all start at $1,200 and go up from there. But I may throw in some interesting ones that aren't in my collection run. Number 10, this is the 1977 Princess Leia Organa. Now this is probably a figure that at some point collectors either have spent money on or will in the near future. And I know that there are a lot of other figures that could probably command this price, but because of the almost necessity to have this figure inside your collection, your collecting possession, with her hard to keep clean, rip free cape, her hair that always seems to get damaged with time, and her hard to keep white body mold, and her very easy to lose blaster. A near mint example of Leia that I've seen going in today's collector market, it's going for $175 to $200. And I know what you're saying right now, $200. And we're only on number 10. Yeah, just wait, it gets more expensive to buy little pieces of plastic. Number nine, and you know, now we can probably lump in a lot of characters at this next price point, but I wanted to share these particular ones. From the power of the force line, we have both Barada and Ramba, both in near mint condition with their coins, they're gonna run you about $200 to $230. Number eight. This is probably my favorite Ewok ever. From the 1985 Power of the Force line, we have Warrock with his hood, quiver, and easily broken bow. A near mint figure without a coin will run you about $275, but expect to pay at least $25 for the coin, if you can find one that is. So you can also throw in a Mana Man without his coin, the Han in Carbonite without the coin, at this price point as well. And the Han in Carbonite, it's a good looking figure too. A figure that comes with an accessory like that. If I was a kid playing with that, that'd be heaven. Number seven. All right, these two are tied at number seven. From the power of the force line, it's the 1984 Imperial Gunner and the 1985 General Landal Carizian. I have seen prices fluctuate lately, but for a mint example and without the coins, they will cost $300 each and expect to pay about $25 to $30 just for the coins. Number six. So this is a special edition because I'm not gonna actually include these in my collection run, but I wanted to include them anyway. One is the Tri-Logo Boba Fett from the 1979 or the 1980 cards. This figure is a bit lighter in color as the regular Boba and might have other slight paint variations such as the knee pads. The other is a hollow tusk sand person. The original sand person had face tusks that are solid, but some were released with a hollow tusk mold. And these rare items will cost collectors seeking them in the market at near mint quality today, anywhere from $300 to $350 each. I've seen them go for lower, but not in mint condition. Number five. So another figure from the Power of the Force run is the 1984 Luke Skywalker in his Imperial Stormtrooper outfit. To find a blinding white and near mint figure with a perfect blaster and helmet is going to cost you about $350 starting. Doesn't this figure look like John Denver? Number four. At number four comes 1985 Power of the Force EV-99. This figure comes with no weapons and no accessories, 
But because it's hard to find a near mint version of this figure due to its brittle limbs, its moving jaw, and its legs being notorious for bowing, and the fact that he is in the Power of the Force toy line, which was only distributed for a short number of years, a mint version of her is gonna run you at least an average of $400 and that might not be without the coin. So expect to pay an extra 30 to $40 for that coin as well. Number three, 1984 Power of the Force R2-D2 with pop-up saber. If you can find a near mint example of this little guy in perfect working condition with his collector's coin and a flawless lightsaber that pops out of his dome, it's gonna run you an easy price of $575, although I have seen prices as low as $350 for a good figure with no coin. Only available in the Sears Cantina set, this was actually a mistake by Kenner, and the character was actually supposed to look like this. So both because he was only in a playset and because he was a mistake, this makes this character this much more valuable. Number two. 1985 Power of the Force Yak Face. If you live in Canada and the UK, this piece might be a little bit less expensive, but because they were never distributed in the US, prices for this have gone for ranges between $550 and $750 for figures in excellent condition and with the collector's coin. And at number one, the 1977 Vinyl Cape Jawa. When Kenner first began making these figures, they made with a vinyl cape. So people in the sales and marketing department at Kenner thought that parents wouldn't see the value in a small figure costing the same as a regular size figure. So when the first run came out, it came with a vinyl cape. That only lasted about a year, and then they switched over to the cloth cape, and it was like that ever since. Starting price for a low graded figure from sellers would be at least around $1,000 to start, but I've seen really poor examples of one on eBay selling for $2,000 at a starting price. But this price on this figure, it always fluctuates. And that is my top 10 most expensive figures. And thank you to Blue Harvest Toys who helped me put together this list. A link for his channel is down in the descriptions, so please check that out. But let me know if I missed anything on your list. And yeah, I know what you're gonna say. You missed rocket firing Boba Fett. Yeah, we all saw Pawn Stars where one guy tried to sell one, but it eventually sold on auction for almost $200,000. See, I did mention it. But I only wanted to mention figures that you and I can actually afford and put into our collections. And I don't think any of us are gonna spend $200,000 on one figure to put in that case. But if you are watching this show and you can actually afford that, hi, and please like and subscribe to the channel. <laughs> oh, and here's a blue snaggletooth that somebody's trying to sell on eBay for almost 10 grand. So if anybody wants to buy that, please do. But which ones did I buy? And both of them are on that list. So a Facebook seller reached out to me that I had dealt with before and said that he needed to sell some items quickly. I had given him a long list of items in a message before and he came back with five things on that list that he had to sell. He had an EV-99 and the Imperial Gunner. Now I mentioned before that the Imperial Gunner and EV-99 were going for prices either close or passing 400 bucks. So what was the price for these? So the price, was 350 for both. And at first, I did think that it was too good to be true. I asked for very detailed pics of the weapon, of the country of origin for the figures, and I asked if there was any imperfections, repro items, you know, loose limbs or any missing or falling off limbs. So I sent these pictures to other collectors that I trusted, and they all said that they were good to go. If you're not a collector and or a fan of Star Wars, and I just told you that I spent $350 on action figures, on just two action figures, you probably think I was crazy. That's still a lot of money, but I knew I had to collect these eventually and to get these figures at pre-pandemic prices pretty much, I had to pull the trigger. So I crossed my fingers and hoped that the collecting gods would smile on me to see what would come inside the mail. And here it is. So I was super excited to open this box, but I had to say for figures that were this seemingly expensive, 
I was expecting a bigger and more protected box. And even when I opened up the cardboard, it was only protected by a plastic store bag and a simple Ziploc. Given that EV99's legs are so prone to breaking and falling off, I was a bit worried. But when I looked at the EV99 figure first, it was actually amazing. The LFL copyright with the correct year and the mold where it was supposed to be printed was there. The jaw worked perfect. The limbs were tight and none of them were detached. It was just a great looking and quality figure. Now for the Imperial Gunner, one of the best looking characters in all of Star Wars, I think. His paint was in perfect condition. None of his Empire emblems were missing paint. Neither was his silver belt buckle or his red blast shield glass. His blaster felt, looked, and was the real deal. So let's look at these figures side by side. And for what we paid in the market for the pandemic, these are perfect figures. And it's great that we had a chance to snag these. I mean, my nerves were just shot as I was opening these items, but let's go back to the desk. So really for our first two big items, I didn't know that I was actually gonna get a chance to buy these for that price, but let alone together in the same lot. And this is a huge milestone for me. I didn't think I was gonna have a chance to buy the last 17 until later in the run, but when this came up, like I said, I had to snatch it. So we can cross off these two off our list and these are our first figures from the last 17. I thought I was gonna get the Anakin first. We can also place those two guys inside our case. This episode was really a true surprise. I did not know I was gonna be filming The Last 17 this early in this run. My heart was beating so fast, not only when I was opening up that box, but when I was actually making that deal on my phone. I mean, but that's the joy of this run. I knew I was eventually gonna stumble on some deals. I didn't know when, and I was hoping they would really come on the more expensive figures. But let me know what you thought both of the deals I got and the figures. I know it's still expensive. I know it was still $180 a figure when you break it down like that. But for me, not having to pay $350 to $400 for one figure, that's a big deal for me. So if you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can join the journey. And as always, thank you for joining me. And I'll see you guys next time. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.